Right. Well, why don't we get started? Um, there's a good, yeah, as folks keep trickling in, yeah, just join in, ask questions. Um, but welcome to our virtual program here at AVAM. My name is Mavette Rosas, and with me is our education associate, Jasmine, and of course, our guest of honor, um, <laughs> Nancy Josephson. And I'm just gonna do a quick intro, um, tell you a little about her work um, or about her for those who don't know about Nancy. Um, artist Nancy is, performs, um, or sorry, transforms objects into extraordinary works um, with her dazzling beadwork, uh, glass mosaic, metal scraps, and more. Nancy nar uh, Nancy's narrative work uh, titled Flow Through the Time Makers is featured in AVAM's current exhibition, Healing in the Art of Compassion. Um, so we are here to join her and kind of listen in and talk about her inspiration, um, how she created the work and a little bit of that background. Um, and a quote from Nancy that we have in our gallery, this series of nine sculptures were created over the last year, a tremendous upheaval, isolation, solitude, grief, reckoning, and to those who are fortunate enough to get their grace. Um, so that's a quote from Nancy. And without further ado, I'll let her take over. We'll be sharing a presentation and she'll kind of walk us through the images. Hi everybody, and thanks for joining tonight. Um, thanks for, you know, time is precious. Time is also really weird this last couple of years. So uh, there's also that. Um, I wanna thank Mavette, Jasmine, um, Becca, who just had a baby, and I'm hoping that she's sleeping, is what <laughs> I'm hoping. Um, and of course, Rebecca, who is um, has been an incredible, supporter and, um, and, and champion of my work over the course of, of years. It's been an honor to be a part of the AVAM family over those years. I've been given incredible opportunities um, and I'm grateful uh, all the time for that in my life. Um, what I wanted to do is, even though I'm going to be talking about flow through the th the things that are currently in the in the museum, this exhibition, I wanted to give a little bit of background on how I got to that because I just thought that was an important thing contextually because this is a different, a bit of a different place with this work than I have been. But it's, you know, it's also there, there are these threads. So um, Mavette's going to be showing the slide. So let's switch over to the first slide so you can, there we go. And there I am um, in front of my bus, which is in front of AVAM or was in front of AVAM. AVAM. Um, and one of the things uh, I have done over the course of years is really played around with different materials. It's That's been one of the most fun things for me as people who know me and have seen my work, who have taken workshops with me, they know I am a material geek. And, um, and so I have always done artwork, but when I started doing um, art, cars, I really learned a lot about different kinds of materials that really uh, ended up um, jumpstarting a lot of different ideas in my work. So the next slide is, um, is a series, is part of a series. This is called Root Doctor. And um, this was done in the early 90s, 1990s. <laughs> Like, duh. Um, but one of the things that I was doing is I was exploring this idea of, of archetypes and pantheons and different spiritual things, but also trying to figure out materials. And I started carving balsa wood with X-Acto knives. And, and I came to this place in my, how I, how I kind of came at all of this is how do I get the intent out there as easily as possible, as directly as possible? I didn't know anything. I hadn't gone to art school. I didn't know anything about art materials, but I knew I wanted to 
make things and transform things. So it, it made all the sense in the world to me to be just kind of starting somewhere and whacking away at it and see what it does. A lot of times it would fall apart or, you know, would not come together. But, um, and the other thing is I started doing series, which um, you'll see more and more down the line. So in the next slide, there are a couple of more pieces from this series. That last one was called Root Doctor. Um, the one on the left is called Diva Lala and uh, the one on the right is Graceful Justine. So you can see I'm using lots of different materials um, and a real trial and error on a lot of this stuff. So I, I came at it and, and I just, um, I came at it, I won't say fearlessly, but I just didn't care so much if things imploded. I really, really, it was so much about the search of materials and trying to figure out how the materials could say what I needed them to say. Um, so the next thing I was also doing art cars and I've done um, to count, you could change the slide maybe. Yeah. So I've done, I think nine cars and the bus. And um, I started, the one on the left is called Souvenirs from Heaven. And that one was um, my van and I would take my kids to school in the van. Um, and the, the beauty of that was those panels Velcroed on and off so that, you know, I could drop them off at school and they didn't, they were cool with that. Um, somebody gave me a car, a Chrysler LeBaron, which is on the right, and I transformed that. That actually, um, that actually got about the same mileage as my living room, which was also, it's kind of like the same thing driving that. Um, anyway, so the next one, um, this was all about sort of physical transformation. Um, throughout that, I was also really trying to connect spirit and, and material, physical material and spiritual intent and connection. Um, everything changed when I went to Haiti. When I went to Haiti in the, the 1990s, um, I was taken over by what I was, what I'd been looking for. And so everything in my work kind of shifted and focused on that connection and growing that connection. Um, I did, this was, um, a, I had three rooms, hallelujah, the, in, um, at AVAM. And this was a show called Holy H2O. It was in 2005. And Rebecca and they allowed me to do three rooms. This was done, if, if you notice the background, the walls were done in the same technique as my car that had the panels that came off. And thankfully, man, this was so intense to put together. This was a, um, uh, a uh, what is it called? A, um, a well, like a wishing well um, in front and the, the, um, the La Serene, the mermaid was at the back and she had, uh, among other things, she had stigmata. So water was coming down her arms and George, George who, who worked uh, at installation at AVAM was so wonderful because I couldn't have done this without <laughs> things would have just been a mess. Water would have been everywhere. Um, but this was, this was a very big, big, uh, a lot of work, but it was very much, um, from the heart. So this was the middle room and this was the room where people would really sit and contemplate. And it was very quiet and, and very, really enveloped a person. Um, the next slide is another, another piece from, from that, from the three rooms. You can go to the next slide, Mevet. Thanks. Um, those were two, the, the, the entrance was, no, no, go back, please. 
not quite done with that. Um, so uh, this was outside of the, on the left, the La Seren was outside of, of that room. So that was walking in. And then um, to the right, there is a whole installation that's a bedroom. It was called Princess Layer Cakes Voodoo Boudoir. And that had just a lot of, uh, a lot of, fla of voodoo flags um, and then pieces that I had made. You can go to the next slide. You'll see a couple of things. So a lot of this was just really playing around with materials. And I'd, I'd never done mosaics before. I was doing a lot of stuff with beadwork, but um, I was also really pushing what could happen with these beads um, and the mosaic. So uh, very much related to the spiritual aspects, but also putting them in my, in my bedroom, in my heart, in my, in my house. Um, so in the next slide, I guess I myself am a little curious as you were exploring mosaics, um, just in how the application of it, like what were you exploring with different mediums or different ways to use the, to create these mosaics? Yes. <laughs> yes. Anybody who has taken, um, taken a workshop with me knows that I come at this knowing very, very little about what I'm gonna how I how I do it but I am relentless in trying in figuring it out so the um the stained glass working with stained glass and trying to put stuff on other stuff it's like gluing stuff to other stuff you just you develop this skill set and you know that works that doesn't work what that what is that's a that's a whole ecosystem unto itself the the bed for instance on on the right um, that's the headboard and i was using one type of glue and one type of material and over the course of the time that i was making that at one point i had to move the the headboard and i moved it and i heard click 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 click, click, click and like beads fell off everywhere mm -hmm. so you know you you learn as you go Abs yeah absolutely <laughs> thank you so in the next slide um those previous slides were all kind of pre my th those are all slide like literal slides they weren't digital this was you know before cameras I don't know before <laughs> cell phone. it was like anti-diluvian it was just so far <laughs> but we get to this place and this um this is about connecting up with the different spirits that I um connected up with in Haiti and I have continued to work with throughout that time um and I was doing once again these series, but the series um, come from this place where in my studio, in the place where I work, it got really loud. So all of these heads were like, or pieces of the heads were all, it felt like they were trying to get my attention. So there was this communication that was happening that um, was very heady, actually. It was really cool because I hear a lot of artists talking about how, you know, you are the conduit and your heart hands are the conduit from some other place to the end result. And I found through this work that I am very much in that in that communication. I am very much a part of that. They talk to me, I talk to them. We talk, we figure ourselves out. They, and sometimes they, they yell at me and they tell me, you know, this is what I want, not that. I want that color, I don't want this, I want that. It's very, very loud and very active. Um, and, and it's never lonely up there. It's always very 
filled with activity and energy and um and it's really fun to have that communication i um it's it's uh it's it's wonderful. I feel very very connected to the work that I'm doing, and it's so much fun to to see them. They're they're already there, but all I'm doing is I'm I'm kind of getting them to the physical realm the way they want to be seen through what I do. So um, anyway, and and so this is a I started doing. Um, it, that is, uh, it's, it's life size pretty much. It's, you know, head, shoulders, knees and toes without the knees and toes with snake and bird. Um, so I, all of them are, are fully beaded, um, and embellished, you know, everything's got beads on them. Um, so, but I was doing different spirits. I was really connecting with very specific spirits. This is called Lady Dambala and connected with the Dambala spirit in Haitian Vodou. The next ones um, are, you can switch the, so on the, on the left is Legba at the Amen Clinic and Legba holds the key um, between the secular and the sacred. Um, and then on the right is La Serene, and she's holding um, she's holding a, a shell in her mouth. And this was one of those things where um, I had I had her head kind of just laying down. And why I had carp heads on my table, I don't know, but they became her shoulders it became embellished, one thing leads to another, and then you got a thing. So that was the thing. Um, and then I did, uh, so I was doing lots and lots of what I called spirit heads. And um, they became the thing that I just adored doing, but they're so intense. And as I say, they're loud. They're like waiting in line and they're saying, I'm next, I'm next. Um, so, so there's a lot of intensity when I'm starting to do them and when I'm doing them and then leading up to when I'm almost done with them. And then they're starting to get another like, okay, I'm next. So it gets, it gets really intense. And I find that um, I need to, kind of pivot or balance between doing really this intense spiritual connection and then having like a little bit of a breath, kind of a sorbet, at which point I do, um, I do things like birds or I do smaller embellished things that are, that I think are beautiful, but they don't have that same connection to the kind of spiritual work that I love doing. Um, so in the next one, you'll see a big 10 footer. She was, um, her name is Erzuli Cuvez and Cuvez is a Creole for incubator. <laughs> so um, she was in the Hope Show, which was 2015. Um, this was all about and all of those within her skirt by the way she's so she's she's really reached right up to the ceiling she was 10 feet without heels um in the middle are all of these little birds and the opening in her skirt was really about the idea of you these were little creatures that would that needed to have a safe space but also needed the ability to have a little bit of risk to grow up to kind of go out to also know that they could come back um so you know the idea of home as as a safe landing place so i took a lot of the in the next slide you'll see um 
another big, I really like these big installations, but they're also a nightmare for anybody who does big work. You know what I'm talking about. This was, um, this was a show called Ruminous and also in that same general area in the museum, the Half Moon Gallery, part of the Half Moon Gallery, which I shared with um, Betsy Youngquist and Jan Hewling, two friends and other people who do beadwork. They're wonderful, wonderful artists. This one, I combined the spirit heads with these three uh, figures that, that were about the phases of physical life. And the first one was this, this one called um, Mambo Vecin. She is a very elemental piece. Um, the next one was, um, was Sister April, and she really was about fecundity. Um, and so each one of them had its own vibe to it. The third one, which I don't have a good slide of, was um, was a, is about um, the ethereal elder. That what happens when you get older and you come through with all the cracks, um, and what you can give to that circle that goes around. So. Um, these are all about seven feet. Now, one thing with large work is after a show, what do you do with it? Um, because most people don't have the capacity to have a seven foot by four foot thing in their space. Um, this one ended up, I decided um, that what I really wanted them to do is live in a space outside. And this had a very ashes to ashes vibe to it, to me. It lives, these three figures live in, uh, I, I do folk herbalism or I've learned enough, some of folk herbalism. That's part of my, my journey in, in Vodou as well as here um, on this plane. Um, and they, live outside in the medicine wheel of my folk herbalism teacher's space, April Coburn. And um, so I go out and visit them, but they, uh, they've been out there for almost two years and they are none the worse for wear. I thought all of those antlers would be gone in a minute and a half and they are, um, they are strong and they're, they, I don't know, maybe they're like Twinkies or something. They'll just outlive all of us. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so the next one is another, um, the next slide is also, I think the Ruminous installation. Yeah, I loved, um, and Rebecca was really helpful in guiding me towards how I, I wanted to do the mirror, the broken mirror. I thought it was really important to have the viewer come in and really be part of the whole, the whole thing and really feel themselves a part of it. And with all these puzzle pieces, um, find out where they were in it too. So you'll see, I used some of the, uh, the spirit heads within that space as well. Um, mm -hmm. Um, we're getting a couple of questions in the chat that I think would be really neat to answer right now. Mm -hmm. um, Denise is asking, have you ever gotten any feedback from Haitian people on what they think of your artwork? Because I know you said that some of your pieces have been based off of that culture. Oh, yeah. I, um, I mean, I've, the people that I have that know my work, um, I, I have been very happy that they understand that I that I do this, that I respect this, that I honor this. They get it. I mean, you know, I, I haven't spoken with everybody, but they dig it. And they they under I think that a lot of people do understand this is what I'm doing. This is the respect that I'm paying. This is my homage and my, my honor to do this work. 
And to be able to bring it to um, a, a different community is also a, a wonderful thing for everybody, I think. Yeah, so. Denise even said, like, that's when you know that something is working, when your audience just gets your work, which is really, really awesome. Well, you know, it's really, I, I think, I think it's, a, I come at it differently. I do the work because I'm, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. They are, we are, you know, the work, the spiritual stuff, the stuff that I'm doing, I am doing for them. I am doing with them. I am, I love it when people connect with it, but that's a, it's almost like, it not, it's not beside the point because that sounds kind of stupid, but this is about a connection that I have with my spirits, with my work. And that's, that's a different, it's a different thing. It's a different thing, I think. That's how I come to it. I am so, I mean, the honor and the, the gratitude that I have in being able to show it and people being able, it, it, the one thing is also, it, the work is, it's like tactily, it's, a, it's beautiful. I know how to work these things that I, that I use, but also I'm guided. It's like, that's the color I want. That's the texture I want. That's what comes together. So, being able to layer that on is um, is is a combo platter that I that I'm that I just really adore. That's awesome. I know some other questions we're getting about the um, slides we're seeing in particular. Um, people are asking where do you get the spirit heads from, and how did you break the mirror and then reinstall it to look so perfectly? Oh, well. This is another thing. I mean, I'm a materials person. So um, where do I get the heads? I make the heads. Um, I have, I start out with like a real basic hunk of styrofoam. I then um, put this material called epoxy sculpt, which is a two part epoxy clay. That's my main base that I work with. And then I, I sculpt the heads and then I put the beads on them. So did that answer the question? I can't, I can't remember what the question was. <laughs> um, where you get the spirit heads from and someone asked what material the heads were made of. So you definitely answered that. Yeah, it's, um, it, what it, it's a poxy sculpt. And then I use for prime, my primary glue is, um, is 100% silicone. It's it's a gasket sealer. It's black silicone that I use, which keeps cars together. Going back to my car universe. Um, so and then and then embellished with different kinds of beads and textures. I do French wire beading stuff, and I do, you know, it's a real combo platter. And I think that's the part that's so much fun is learning how to do these different techniques just by trial and error. And then, you know, you have one bead that's great. Well, if you have one, then like a, a billion is like really great. So theoretically, that's why having a lot of materials is like the thing. In terms of the, the putting the, um, the mirror on and how I did. Okay, here's a little trick. You, the mirror comes, the, this particular mirror came in a 12 by 12 um, square. So the door was whatever, six feet high by whatever. So it took X amount of 12 inch squares. What I would do is I would take the 12 inch square and I would score it, mm. I would cut it, and, and use that, you know, you can take apart each little piece and put it right on. So you got a 12 by 12, you know, good to go. So it looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. Awesome. Thank I, you. I have so a <laughs> Yeah, definitely. 
And yeah. it, I mean, it does look very immersive. So I, I can, even from these photos, I can only imagine what it might have, must have felt like in the space. So very cool. It was, it was super intense. It was super duper intense. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a lot of energy, but it was also kind of funny. I would, you know, if I was coming down to the museum to do whatever, I would stop in just to kind of get a sense of if everything's, you know, all the hair is right and everybody's froofed up properly. Um, and people, but people would be in there taking selfies. It was the most adorable thing. I just loved going. I, I love going in and just being the fly on the wall and, and seeing how people are reacting to the work. It's, it's really lovely and fun. Um, what took me to Haiti? Um, I, uh, it's a, it's a very, long story, I will say that I, um, my mentor, Marilyn Holberg, may she rest, she is resting, of course. No, she's kicking it up. Um, uh, saw some of my work and said, you have to go to Haiti. And I said, okay. And I went down there and um, she introduced me to a number of, of people. I went down by myself, but she took my picture and showed a couple of people and, and then gave me their names. And so I met, I met some people through her and it started, um, it started a reaction and, and Silva Joseph, who was my first um, spiritual father took me in and um, I was going back uh, three times, three or four times a year um, for a very long time. I've been doing that since it's been about 25 years. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to the last couple of years. Um, and I don't know that I'll be able to, um, but who knows, who knows? Yeah. Anyway, so um, from, that, from that, I just wanted to go into now here's where we are. Um, and the next slide is the first, the first one I did for this. I didn't know it was going to be a series, but you know, in retrospect, thinking about the previous work, I seem to work in series with the idea of one small seed of an idea and then the next and then the next. So it, it forms a story or a narrative or parts of a story. Um, when, um, when the lockdown happened, there was, uh, there was so much unknown. There was so much anxiety. There was so much, a weird shift of what time was. Um, I was beyond this is so here's my justification for having hoarded beads for decades this was <laughs> i didn't have to buy a bead um i had this all in my studio so when when the lockdown happened at the beginning of mid-March to 2020, um, I, things got very quiet in my studio. Very, very quiet. It, uh, it, it was um, uncomfortably quiet, but it was uncomfortably quiet everywhere. Um, and I, I really needed to work. I needed to understand where I was. I needed to understand how I was going to, what this, what this meant for me. And then what I was hearing from people I knew. Um, so I started this work. I had never really done any painting before, but I was always interested in it. And I, though I, though I knew my way around the whole bead universe and how I work with beads, I, I felt like I needed to strip things down and to get into uh, more to figure out what paint does. 
So, um, so I started making these, this figure and in the back. So a friend of mine, Gerard Cambon, who is a French artist, um, I had visited him and he gave me this thing, this metal thing that um, is for catching fish or putting fish in to save the fish for taking them home or I don't know, I don't know, some fish thing. Um, but to me, it looked, it was a perfect head piece. And um, I was making, I was playing around with different resins. I was making uh, snake forms. And so I took the snakes out of the mold that I had made and I twisted them and I, I fit them in this because in Haitian Vodou, Dambala is a life force and I wanted to, this is about, this is called What I Carry and it's about the calm and this idea of I carry this life force. I, I carry the life force. It's a spiritual touchstone and the way I was dealing with the whole pandemic time frame was I was going two weeks, two weeks, two weeks in my head. I am not going to think about what's going to happen in two weeks because everything is shifting. Everything is changing. Initially we had no, idea. well, we still, you know, a lot of things are changing. Um, so I needed to be calm and focused and clear, but also um, understanding I didn't have control of this, but I had my spirits with me and I was going to, that was enough. It, it, not like I was going to get through or it, it, this was going to happen. It was like, this is enough. Um, in the next slide, preparing, um, preparing and gathering. This hey, next, the, yeah. Um, really quick, we're getting a couple of questions. I love what you just said about, you know, everything that I think a lot of us can relate to going through the pandemic. Um, if we could go back to the last slide, really quick. Um, we've gotten a few questions that I think we can do at the end because they relate to overall just a lot of your artwork, but. One person, Miss um, Janice, asked for um, pieces like this. Do you string the beads and then glue them, or did you glue them all piece by piece? And she says your work is amazing. Oh, well, thank you. That's very kind. Um, my, I get beads that are strong, and I glue them on string by string. It's a technique that I figured out because I that's what I needed to do is figure stuff out. Um, I will occasionally do one by one. If it's a larger bead than the regular seed beads, I'll do one by one. And, um, you know, it's just what I do. La 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 la. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Nancy. So the next one um, is is a, she is all, all of the, all of them are sort of this, um, for the most part, younger, um, they all, I, for me, they have this sense of calm to them. Even the ones that are kind of uh, intense, except for maybe two. Um, this was, this was like, the next month. So these were coming pretty fast. I would make kind of one a month, it seemed like. And this was really hearkening back to what ingredients can I have in my herbal life to, to protect myself and my family, my friends, you know, and that once again, from this headdress, all of those little bottles have herbs in them. So I'm, I'm gathering, I'm, I'm thinking about what I need to prepare. Um, herbalism is a really important part of my work. 
So um, it made a lot of sense. And also in this, all of my senses started getting, rather than this sort of flatter calm, it started percolating a little bit. Um, at the same time of this internal thing going on, which was very different from the spiritual work, the spirit heads, where, um, where they were coming to get me, I was going to get this. Um, and thinking about and reacting to what was going on around me and around people I knew and around the, the vibe that I was getting. It wasn't just, you know, I was really in this wonderful, um, very privileged position to be able to do this. Um, so I was reckoning with all of that too. Anyway, um, a lot of people were so, uh, everybody, the anxiety level was getting to be so intense and the energy that is related to that kind of thing really made me need to pull back a little bit. Um, and in this next slide, I, I made a piece using Wow, that's weird. Okay, so this, so I'm jumping over. I guess I made this one next, huh? This was dealing, this is called Firestarter and it is dealing with um, just anger, just being anger and, and fear, angry and fearful and trying to figure out um, what it looked like to be in that to to manage that space of fear so this this came out of that one and um yeah that was a that's a super intense piece there are two that are like super super intense in my in in my experience and having made them and gone through so the next one i think is the one that i was talking about before that's who, whose water I'm willing to carry. And this was a really about, um, I need to put some boundaries on how that energy comes in and how it bombards every, you know, people, the anxiety was so off the, off the charts that, um, I think everybody had to recalibrate what their boundaries were, how much of the outside, um, you know, craziness they could take. And on the top of her head, there's a bowl and all of these, all these little um, vessels were made with that stuff, epoxy sculpt. And then I painted the inside and I put resin clear resin in it so it looks like water and on the top there's a big a big vessel and in that one there are five smaller ones that are floating and that is my close my my husband my son my daughter my daughter-in-law and my grandson those are the ones I hold um so that and the next slide that's called a plate spinner. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's kind of part of that whole recalibrating and, but also where, how much comes in, how, where are those boundaries? Um, and feeling like they're just, there's just so much going on and so much balancing to get through where we are. So, you know, I, what I was doing is really so much reacting to what I was getting from the outside. So it wasn't just, you know, my, it was, it was my internal discussion, but it was also very much related to, I felt like that's what also so many other people were, um, were dealing with and were having to contend with is, is this, imbalance and how do we keep everything kind of from spilling over and everything breaking. So 
Um, so we're getting, you know, further down into the whole process. The next slide is, um, what is the next slide? The next slide is precarious perch, I think. Yep. And uh, another super intense one, but this is also very, very calm. Her eyes, I don't know, her eyes are like hella crazy. Um, she's a, she will, it feels like laser eyes. Um, but at the same time, this is all, you know, very much obviously about sort of this balancing act um, and these, small moments that where you felt like things were, things were in just for a second, things were in balance. So within this whole, um, I think that the reds and the oranges and those hot colors um, were so much about the intensity of where we were, but with this idea of really appreciate those moments of balance when you feel like it, you're going to be okay. Everything's going to be, you know, it, it's going to be different, but, but you will, um, the, the world will turn. The world will keep turning. Um, but also, and in the next slide, there is this concept of, um, and we were going through a lot of turmoil within the political structure, <clears throat> as people will remember. Um, this this piece is called French Braid, and um, but but it's uh, colon. Um, when you're a nail, everything looks like a hammer, and when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail, and this idea of of hierarchy and victimization power and who controls what narrative and um so this is this is really what that one was about is is how does who controls what and and where where are you in that um, are you the hammer? Are you the nail? Do you need to be either one of them? Or can you just let that whole thing go? Um, the patina was something that I, that I was working with, uh, that I started working with and, and just loved. I loved that idea of, of um, being able to make something look like metal. It was really, really cool. I love I love materials. God, I just love them. Anyway, um, so the next one is um, Precious Little Holding Me Back. And this piece, man, this was a rough one. This really came into full itself after January 6th um, when I was along with oh so many completely stopped in my tracks and traumatized by what was going on in the political, what was, you know, within the pandemic, then this, um, this crazy, craziness, craziness. And this was about the idea of my nest and though they're, you know, I have feathers, uh, feathers are flying, but I am holding my nest. I am holding strong to my nest. And a lot of that has to do with, with um, where, withstanding your ground and where your moral compass is and what you're willing to do and what, we're, how do you, how do you protect your home? Going back to that idea of safe space. The last one of the series is called Call. And this one I did, um, you can change the slide, Mavette, please. Sorry, there's a delay. It's Oh, yeah, this is my connection. Um, this one is, is Call. And um, it's starting to come out of the center of the pandemic and how 
was, this is after the vaccines were available. And, you know, there was a moment before, I guess, before Delta um, or before Omicron, I don't know, it's sometime <laughs> where it felt like um, we were emerging. And the idea that she has, um, she has markings on her, on her body and her face are really going back to that. We have been scarred, but we bring that forward scars and all into a new something. We are transformed, but we're rooted in a calm and in a moral center that, um, that is, that is the center. That is the center. Um, and I, I wrote something about this is, um, at the end of, at the end of this particular grouping of, of pieces, um, we who are fortunate enough to have endured had a road to travel. We haven't come out unscathed. Hopefully we come out with gratitude, humility, and a knowledge that will lead to transformation filled with compassion in the center of the moral compass. And I do hope that that's, you know, what we take out of this experience, though we're still in the experience. So there's one more slide of, um, of the, of in the show. This is an older piece that I did called The Healer. And, um, and Rebecca really wanted this piece in the show because it was so much about the what what healing was and what um, compassion was and how it's all tied together. Um, this it's filled with the ideas of creativity, of risk, and the primary herbs that I used in those little vials are um, lavender, rosemary, and ashwagandha. And the lavender is for calm, the rosemary for memory and cognitive focus and the ashwagandha is to restore calm and clarity. So we go forward, we go forward with calm, we try to focus, all of those things. And the last slide, because I always like to show this because it's, this is my cremation urn, that's my tooth. Um, and the, uh, because, you know, this is part of it. And we celebrate the life we have and we go out with a bang. And the very last slide is on the back of my cremation urn, which says, does this make my ashes look big? Because I want my great, 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 great grandchildren to know this is, this was, part of your heritage. So that's the slideshow. I don't know where we are time-wise, if we're heading into- You are getting so many compliments in the oh, chat. thank your you. Work is exceptional. Um, someone oh, said you that much. you have incredible artwork with the, um, it's a conscious manifestation of your unconscious life. And they said that as a therapist, <laughs> It's this is so a lot of this unconscious life. Yeah. <laughs> this is more um, if you're ready, there are some questions that we got throughout um, the panel that I thought would be great to see or to answer after we've seen more of your artwork. Um, let's see. So earlier, um, someone named Janice asked, is it safe to say that your mind is in a constant motion at a warp speed because you just have so many thoughts in one piece? Well, I hope it's not in warp speed. I, <laughs> I, dive, I dive deep and um, and things come at me, things bubble up. Um, I am, I cannot tell you how fortunate I am to feel like I have, I love doing what I do. I love it. I am, God, I mean, everybody should be able to have a kind of experience where they're just 
I feel like I'm fed. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing, although I will pull back after this series, and I was talking to my friend who is here, Judy, and mm -hmm. things have gotten very silent in my studio. And I'm very, um, it, it's a, it's, it's really concerning to me. I, I want them to talk to me again. I'm ready for them to talk to me again. <laughs> so I'm call, I'm talking to, you know, I'm, I'm calling them. Mm -hmm. Aww. That's we'll see. Oh, yeah. Um, someone else, um, I believe Judith wants to know, how do you fund your larger installations? Um, by making other pieces that are not, uh, that are sellable. Mm. So, you know, I make, I make, um, I make usable stuff. I make deer head sconces. I make salt and pepper bird shakers. I mean, just, I make stuff um, and I sell it. And, um, and that, that helps me be able to fund the other stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Maybe, you know, I remember talking about, or remember you mentioning, or you kind of your process and how works for speaking to you and it's a very um communicative experience but do you one question was like is there any um sketching or planning ahead or mapping or do you just kind of let the pieces happen as as they naturally do yeah i don't sketch i don't i don't i don't do that i they they sort of start the i put in some eyes and then we go mm -hmm. and we're like off Okay. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you are attaching um, the beads to your artwork or just attaching pieces in general, what kind of glue do you use? Someone was asking earlier. My primary glue is silicone. Um, I use, uh, I was telling, saying I use the black silicone, which is gasket sealer. Um, it's a hundred percent silicone. And I, I learned that from the art car world. And, you know, when you're driving at 70 miles an hour, you can't have beads flying all over the road. So this stuff stays. Mm. Okay. Awesome. That's really good to hear. <laughs> It's, yeah, I mean, it's really, it's a, you learn a lot from being in that community. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's not art making materials primarily. It's like construction or uh, plumbing stuff, you know, so, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, it's just been wonderful learning all of those materials and what they do and what they don't do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Alyssa wants to know, do you always have an exhibit at AVAM? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of feels that way. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I do not have, I'm not in every exhibition. Um, I have been super fortunate to be in a bunch. Mm -hmm. um, and the bus, unfortunately, had to be taken out of this realm um but we're hoping that there will be another that i can embellish and put in a plaza so you know and there are a couple of pieces that that will go into the permanent collection but in terms of the uh exhibitions uh, you know when um when a curate you know when stuff is curated in if i'm if i'm pegged i'm gonna the one really good thing, one of the millions of good things about AVAM is that the shows run 11 months. Mm -hmm. So in most galleries, you have like a six week show, four week, six week or something like that. It, with 11 months, you better turn out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the idea of these big pieces, like I wanna, I wanna stretch everything I can stretch. I want to make it big. I want to make a statement like with all the bells and whistles. So this allows me to do that. Mm -hmm. um, it also means that I'm living with a lot of big pieces afterwards. <laughs> so that's kind of the downside. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Oh my goodness, you're getting so many questions in here. It's awesome. Lots of compliments as well, too, about, again, just your beautiful artwork. A lot of people are feeling very inspired. Good. Um, Do we want to, yeah, ask, maybe ask one or more and one or two more and then um, we'll say it's 8.30, so. Then go to bed, everybody. <laughs> All right, let's see. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. oh, up. Here's one with the art cards. Do you have studio assistance um, in helping you embellish those cards? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I have uh, early on, I, I thought that I would be able to have somebody come in and I, she put a sequin on like, like a quarter turn. And I just thought, this like I no, that's not some that's not something a normal person does is say, I'm sorry, the sequin is a quarter turn the other way. And so I realized very early on that part of this whole thing is doing it. Mm -hmm. Doing it. And that's the thing that I love too. I don't want and I it's a gift for me to be able to do this. Like mm -hmm. it so. I can't imagine somebody else giving, I mean, maybe I'm being too um, greedy. <laughs> I mean, I feel like just in your practice though, it is a very almost personal, um, very interactive experience. So I could see why that. Absolutely, with the spirits heads. I mean, they're, they're yelling at me all the time. Right. All the time. Like, don't put that, put that. Don't put that, put that. Go over there, get that. So, yeah, yeah, and so that doesn't translate. Now, the you know, there's a lot of little kind of, you know, work like boing, 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 but that's also incredibly meditative. I love doing that. And it also is something that my family likes that I do because it it's truly the only thing that keeps me from losing my marbles everywhere is this that's my that's my meditation place that's the place I'm happiest and um that I understand the world best it's that space very cool well I think that if anything, that's a great place to end it. I mean, I know a lot of us have been through a lot these past few years. And like you've mentioned before, continue to still navigate this world as best we can. And so um, it is great to see so many people connect to this work and to be able to almost visualize um, maybe their own experience or see that art um, is such an expressive way to help process those thoughts and those moments. Um, and even myself, uh, I'm fascinated to see and excited to see what artists all over could have been or, or have been producing over the past two years and to see um, what comes into the art world, um, visionary, not, you know, in other, in other realms, um, what will come out in the next few years and what we'll see, so. Yeah, I think it's gonna be transformational. I think that so many things are being thought of differently. I hope so, because I think we need, um, we need that kind of new power mm -hmm. to, to be, to, to sort of find its way to the center. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for joining us. I, I'm really, I'm really touched that so many people, um, so many people have seen this stuff and so many people have connected with it. Um, thank you for giving me your time and Avam, y'all. <laughs> Killing it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, we hope that you have a safe, uh, restful evening and rest of the week. Uh, you can always find us at avam.org um, for more information about our exhibitions currently on view, events coming up. Um, we are starting to reopen a little bit. So stay tuned. We have hopefully some exciting things um, down the line uh, to rip off to Rebecca um, and to our Becca, who, yes, who could not join us tonight, um, but always thinking about them. So um, yes, be safe. Thank you for joining. And we hope to see you all at our next virtual or in-person event. Um, take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>